An important topic in climate change is the carbon budget of forest ecosystems, how many tons of carbon dioxide are emitted, and how many tons are stored. With all numbers in this context, it is important to know whether we are talking about carbon or carbon dioxide. When we look at statistics today, it is always important to consider comparable units. Are we talking about carbon or carbon dioxide? During the photosynthesis, carbon is taken up, but O2 returns to the atmosphere again. And the relation between carbon and CO2 is 12 to 44, which tells us nothing else than the molar mass. And when we look at statistics today, we should always agree on one unit in order to make comparisons. Since more and more CO2 enters the atmosphere, carbon sinks are highly important to remove it from the atmosphere and, if possible, store it. Forests and oceans worldwide are the biggest sinks, absorbing many million tons of carbon. In the official Austrian greenhouse gas balance, the forest is the only CO2 sink. What is important to say here is that the forest has two roles in the context of climate change. One is that it is affected because the environmental conditions change. And at the same time, it is also part of climate change as it buffers climate change. Forests store a lot of CO2 or carbon, depending on how you want to look at it. If you think about it, the Austrian forest stores about 985 million tons of carbon. Estimates state that without forest, the CO2 levels in the atmosphere would be 30% higher. That means the forest buffers a lot of CO2 through growth. But of course, it is not enough to absorb the entire CO2 increase. The increasing amounts of CO2 in the atmosphere and the rising temperatures also have an impact on the forest's carbon supply. More photosynthesis takes place with sufficient water and nutrient supply, and therefore more carbon is stored in the biomass by the trees. The problem here is the following. Tree growth is limited by several minimizing factors. Classical drivers for growth are water supply and nutrient supply. So it now depends on which drivers are the minimizing ones. That makes it difficult to identify clear cause and effect chains in field experiments. But from controlled experiments, it is very clear that higher levels of CO2 have sort of a fertilizing effect. Due to the rising temperatures, the activities of microorganisms in the soil also increase, resulting in an additional release of soil carbon to the atmosphere. This decomposition and release of soil carbon due to temperature rise is explored on a trial area near Aachenkirch in Tirol. In the soil, we have a set of microorganisms that decompose leaves, roots and humus. This is a natural process. These soil microorganisms function a bit differently than we do. They become more active with increasing temperatures. That means, when they are more active, they eat more and also breathe out more. The breathed material is released as carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide diffuses from the soil into the air. This is called soil respiration. The tree crowns on top absorb the CO2, and the dead substance is breathed out at the bottom. Now, the only problem is that if the soil reacts more strongly to rising temperatures than the plants, soil carbon becomes released. This, of course, would have an effect on the atmospheric CO2 concentration and on the climate change. It actually would speed up climate change. In the soil experiment in Aachenkirch, part of the forest soil is constantly warmed to 4 degrees Celsius, higher than its surroundings. We have different plots here, the areas with yellow borders. And one of them, this one, is heated. Heating cables are buried. And then there are many control areas for comparison. CO2 flux measurement is done by putting a tight lid on the measuring chamber, which is connected to the measuring device with two hoses. In this closed system, the air moves from the measuring chamber into the measuring device and back. 
Because of the additional CO2 from the soil, the concentration in the measuring chamber is higher than in the outside air. This trial area is one of three worldwide, where the soil warming has taken place for over 10 years. And the special thing about Aachenkirch, this limestone location, is that the warming effect has remained the same for 10 years. In the other areas with soil heating equipment, the effect subsided completely after three to six years. This suggests that the easily decomposable carbon was decomposed and that the heating effect was reduced thereafter. The situation here is different. On top of the limestone, there is a lot of barely protected organic substance in the soil, which apparently can be decomposed easily. The soil experiment shows that about 40% more CO2 is released from soil, warmed by 4 degrees Celsius, because of the increased activity of the microorganisms at higher temperatures and consequently a faster decomposition of organic substance in the soil. This strong and long-lasting effect on the trial location cannot be compensated for through the increased tree growth. The forest would consequently develop from a carbon sink into a carbon source. In order to reach a holistic process understanding, in addition to the CO2 release from the forest soil, a number of additional parameters are gathered in the Aachenkirch climate manipulation experiment. At the moment, the forest is still a large CO2 sink globally. The question is how it will further develop. Globally, for various reasons, it looks more like that the sink strength will decrease. It becomes more complex when dryness appears, because it is possible that the soil reacts differently from the trees. In this experiment, we put up roofs and we simulated warming and dryness at the same time and discovered that when substantial dryness is present, the drought effects are even stronger than those from increasing warming. Taking into consideration possible long drought periods, it becomes clear that increased temperatures could play a lesser role. Drought decreases the CO2 release from soil especially in the warmed areas. The amount of carbon that can be stored in the soil depends on its depth and composition. It can be seen very easily on the soil profile. What we see here is that the soil is relatively shallow. That stuff underneath, the light stuff, is dolomite gravel. That is already rock. The soil itself is probably only 30 centimeters deep. Nevertheless, about 150 tons of carbon per hectare are stored here, in this area. The decomposing of the organic substance now takes place in the soil horizon. When we look at the soil here, we can see that it is very dark, and the dark stuff is humus. These humic substances are contained in the soil. We can also see the substantial amount of roots in the soil. In the upper soil it is really extreme, like a mesh of roots. Not all the CO2 emitted from the soil is from decomposition of organic substances. About half comes directly from the roots. Carbon can be bound to the forest biomass or the soil for different periods of time. It can be affected with different forest management measures, like the rotation period or the stem density. Forest damage through storms fire or harmful insects are able to diminish the stored carbon in a short time frame. If wood from trees is used as a sustainable material for long living wood products, the carbon it contains can be stored for a long time. How much and for how long largely depends on the usage of trees. The wood flow graph shows the different usage patterns of wood processed in Austria. 100% of it is used in the creation of wood products, paper and energy. Especially when wood is used as construction material, a lot of carbon is bound, because one cubic meter of wood stores about one ton of CO2, or 273 kilograms of carbon. The usage of long-living wood products as a substitute for climate-intensive resources such as concrete, synthetic material or crude oil 
as well as the multiple uses of the raw material wood, are crucial for active and sustainable climate protection. With an unmanaged forest, the forest and wood stocks increase, resulting also in higher carbon storage. However, at the same time, emissions from substitute fossil products rise, which result in more CO2 released into the atmosphere than would be additionally stored through non-cultivation. These results are a summary of various projects of the Federal Environmental Agency, the Austrian Research Center for Forests, and the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, funded by the Climate and Energy Fund Austria. In the long run, sustainable forest management and utilization of wood has a clear positive impact on the greenhouse gas balance and our climate. Therefore, the utilization of wood in long living products will be an important contribution to climate protection in the future. But for all, carbon storage in forests and forest products is only part of the solution. The climate goals of the Paris Agreement will only be reached if the carbon dioxide emission caused by humans is reduced drastically.